Good morning. We greet you again from the Peace Baptist Church down here in Franklin, Alabama. It's not as best us to see another beautiful Sunday morning. We welcome you on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. For those who have joined us here, as well as through those media resources, and we thank God just for another opportunity to come and to share the, the word with everyone. Uh, we, give, we give God glory, honor, and praise for those of you who are here. And as the book of words, your word is bowed heads for prayer. Father God, we come now and we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity for us to come and share in, in your word and in your service. We thank you, Lord, for our so many blessings. Lord, although all of us have our own trials and tribulations that we deal with, Lord, we still see how much of a blessing you are in our lives. We realize, Lord, that as long as you are on your side, then, Lord, you have the power and the ability to make everything all right. So we ask you, Lord, for the continued strength, the continued wisdom, the continued know-how to do what it is pleasing in our sight so the Lord, that we can make it through what we're going through. Pray now, Lord, as we go into your word, that you will search me thoroughly. If you find some in me that hinders me from fulfilling my assignment today, we ask that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus and replace it what needs to be there. We ask you now, Lord, that you hide me behind the cross so the people will see none of me but all of you. I also ask you, Lord, that you give your people the ear to hear what you've got to say. And in the midst of this exchange, Lord, we ask that you allow us to continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Allow us, Lord, to lift you up. For you said, if I be lifted up from earth, I draw all men unto me. In Jesus' mighty name we say this prayer. Amen. Our morning message will come from the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4. Ephesians, chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 1. It is a familiar text. Ephesians, chapter number 4, beginning with verse number 1. And it reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are ye are called, with our lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. I want to talk about, for just for a few minutes this morning, being the church that God called us to be. Being the church that God called us to be. Well, this is I have two sons, one who's 29, the other one in the 16, and they share a common bond as it relates to music. Both of them I love music, playing the drums. And believe it or not, although they are different in age, both of them love the movie Drumline. Drumline is the movie that's been played in my house so much that I believe I can, I can say the, the movie word for word. Drumline is a movie where there's this gifted young man uh, from upstate New York, I believe, who is gifted on the snare drum. He goes and he's highly recruited to this college. And he goes to this college, uh, black college, and he's uh, has the opportunity to share his gift and uh, be a freshman on the, the drum line. Uh, he is highly talented. He's very confident in himself and in his ability. Uh, he, he has an arrogance or a, a confidence about himself, even in his walk, to the point to where he didn't feel inferior to anyone. And so it is when he tried out for the, for the spot of the band uh, that his, his colleagues Gave their, uh, their approval, their, their approved that he, he should be on. He was talented enough and gifted enough to make the line. But the section leader who was there, sitting there with the drum, the, the band director looked at him and said, did y'all recognize the fact that this young man has not looked down at his music? This young man cannot read music. And, and so that should be a disqualification of him making the line. But the colleagues spoke up so that they, they, they ignored that for a while. The, the, the band director was in a position where he was facing losing his job, and so he needed the best people on the field. And so it was that he disregarded the rules and allowed this boy to make it on the on the line. So this boy made it on the line. The section leader and I hear they, they, they collided because the section leader didn't like his arrogance. The section leader really was challenged by this young man because he was so gifted. And this young man, he made no bones about it that if he could, he would take the section leader's spot. And so it was, so it was. And he gave him an opportunity, the section leader was there. He had a solo in the game. And he gave the solo to this, uh, gave the solo to the, 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 to the freshman. And he, he says to him, uh, I'm going to give you my spot. Since you say you're the man, I'm going to give you my spot. And people wonder why is it you would give him your spot? You know, uh, Doc ain't going to be happy with that. The band director's not going to be happy. He said he's going to freeze up. But instead of the young man freezing up, he showed out and did well. 
young man did well to the point where the band director got mad because they changed the routine and he was upset. He was wondering why did you change the routine? And so it was, it got so bad that there was just constant conflict with it. And with each round, the young man made the challenge. His attitude got worse. His arrogance got higher. And so it was that the family, family, they finally met. The conflict was when they got into the competition. There was another drum line that was there. And this other drummer from another school came and touched this drum. And this young man who was arrogant started the fight. He started the fight. And so it was. They got to fight the school against this school. It was a big old mess. They made the news and everything. It was a big old mess. And it got to the point where the young man, because of his action, got put off the drum line. The section leader had the section got together, they voted him off. Then he got which is the band director, they voted him off. And I know you want to remember why didn't you give us this particular movie? Because I want you to understand that they put this boy off the team. And so it was his daddy sent him a package one day. The young man's dad said, so while he was suspended, gave him some music, and his boy got the music in his head, he ran down to the band room, and that's so what happened. The band director, the band section leader was there. And so he says to him, he says to him, why are you in the building? Why are you wasting tape? Why are you here recording this? Sex leader, well, you're not even allowed in the building. You're not even on the team anymore. He said, you know what? I'm tired of you, Malcolm. So they got into it. So strap up. And so they got into a one-on-one -on -one competition. And so it was. The section leader had to watch this. The section leader had to recognize that the young man was better than he was. The young man was better than he had. He acknowledged the fact. He said, yeah, you, you're the best. You're the, he said, now go out and be the best without the band. He says, what? He stopped. He looked at him. He said, yeah, I am the best. He said, then he thought about it without the band. Because without the band, he says, you are nothing. When people see you, they see the band. He says, one band, one sound. One band, one sound. It's one band, one sound. And without the band, you are nothing. And I know you wonder why, fella, you spent this time for taking this movement. I want you to know, my brother Susan, in the church, there are many gifted people that come to church. There are many people who have confidence, who have God has blessed them with talent, and they show out, and they can do all these wonderful things. But watch this. We got to understand that we are one church under one God. We are one family. And when, watch this, when people, when you're working for God, people don't see just you. They see the church. And if we're not working together, then we're not being the church that God has called us to be. And the problem is, brothers and sisters today, with all these issues and problems in the world, the church needs to be the church that God has called us to be. But we're too busy doing our own thing. We're too busy shining with our talents that God has blessed us with. That we're doing things on our own and not being the church that God has called us to be. And the world is suffering right now because the church is not doing its job. And so this day I want to show you how we can be the church that God called us to be. I'm going to show you how we can be this one church of the one God in one family. Doing what God has called us to be. Because when we're working for God. People don't see us as individuals. They see the church as a whole. And when we want to shine on our own and do what we want to do, then we're not being effective in our ministries. So we've got to learn how to be the church that God called us to be. And Paul is telling the church of Ephesians, he's telling them, he's telling the church of Ephesus how to be that. He says, watch this, he says, he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, of Lord beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation what which you are called. We need to know to understand that we're privileged and we are, it's an honor for us to be on the Lord's side. To be a part of God's family, we need to understand that we have a purpose, we have a calling, and we ought to recognize that and be willing to have an appreciation for God, an appreciation for the work that he's given us, to, to, to have an appreciation for, for what he has brought us through, because all of us got a testimony, all of us could be somewhere else, but God has so fit for us to be in his house, being a part of his ministry, and we ought to walk like we're a part of his team, we ought to walk like we're a part of his side of the other family. That's the way that we were supposed to walk, the way we were supposed to live, the way we were supposed to do things. You know, no, I'm not telling you that, just, that, 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 that you're holy all the time, that you're going to be perfect and not make mistakes. But even in our mistakes, that's a way that we carry ourselves. Much like a band, when you see a band on the field, they're uniform, they're together, they're working in sync with one another. Although they got different parts, different instruments, they're still a part of them making this one song, and they're doing their best to make this song the best of their ability. And here it is in the church. With all of us in here, we have different instruments, we have different gifts and talents, but we got to have an appreciation and be in uniform and live the life that God has called us to live. We got to walk in the vocation, we got to have an appreciation. We take this day for granted. There are many people out there who wish they could be in the shoes that we're in, but look how God has blessed us. And to show our appreciation, we ought to walk worthy, we ought to appreciate what the Lord has done in our lives. We ought to have 
have appreciation if you're willing to jump at an opportunity to serve and to minister to somebody, to tell somebody how good God has been to us so that we can bring somebody closer to the Almighty God. We got all worthy of the vocation that we were called. You were called, which means that you were special. You were called, which means that there's something in you. There's something that God put in you to help to increase the kingdom, to proclaim the kingdom of God. And don't take it too lightly. Don't take it too good. How big or how small that role is. You have a part that God has put in you to do. And you are the one worthy of that calling. But then watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, but when you do that, that's the way you walk. He said, you ought to be humbled and meekness. Which means, watch this, because what comes along with the talents of God are the blessings of God. What comes along with being a child of God are the blessings of God. God opens up windows of heaven and pours out blessings on his children. And we've allowed these blessings, watch this, to separate us because, watch this, we get to the point where sometimes we feel like we're better than the ones sitting next to us. We, 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 we establish big eyes and we use in church. Shame on us when we serve the same God. It doesn't matter if you're, from the, you're standing behind the pulpit, preaching from the pulpit, or you at the usher at the, at the door. That's not matter you're wrong. You could be just a candidate that comes and just give candy in the church. All of us play a part, and we ought to stay humble enough to appreciate the fact that God has put us in this position so that we can continue to do and make the church all that it can be. We walk around with our arrogance. We feel that because we got more money than somebody else, because we got more education than somebody else. Because our church is bigger than somebody else's. So your church got a large congregation that, that we better than somebody. We are part of one family in God. And we got to stay humbled and, and be there. Watch this. There's no pastor or preacher who's better than the other. There's no choir that's better than the other. All of us are working for the same God. We may be in different locations, but we're the same God. So we ought to remain humble in the positions that we're in. Walk around with a meekness about ourselves. A calmness about us. Don't walk around with attitudes or arrogance about ourselves. We ought to be, watch, he says, he says, he says, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering. Because watch this, because when you are a child of God, watch this, many people, can't, we can't be the church we are because when suffering comes, people want to leave. We want to stop coming. We want to stop doing when suffering comes. He said, we got to be long suffering and be willing to deal with one another because watch this, some of our biggest enemies are not going to come from our sides. They're going to come from within. Because everybody who comes to church is not a part of the church. Because sometimes, watch this, you can be in church, but God not be in you. And so you got to learn how to deal with folk, even in the house of God who do your own. So he said, watch this, so you got to stay humble enough to keep your relationship with God on the level it needs to be. Because suffering is going to come, and it's going to come from those who are in your circle. And you've got to be careful not to become bitter because it affects your ministry. Because the ones sometimes who need the most help are the ones who bring up the most hell in your life sometimes. So you've got to be able to be humble. You've got to be able to stay meek and allow God to use you and work through you and get past that you because of the fact my brother says to me, it's hard loving and treating people right who have done you wrong. But you got to realize that there's a bigger picture out there. It's ministry involved. So we're going to be the church we got to be. He says that we got to have an appreciation for the calling. We got to walk word of the calling that we've been called. He says then that's the way we got to do. He says we got to have loneliness, loneliness and meekness with long suffering. Forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Because there is one body and one spirit even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you in, and in you all. Watch this. It's important for us to be the church because watch this. That's power when we come together. Uh, when your body is operating in sync, when the brain Oh, down to the bottom of your feet are in sync. Ah, you have a, a little pep in your step. Ah, when you feel good, yeah, you act a little better when you're feeling good. When you are in order, when things are in order and working properly, yeah, you seem to do better when things are working in order. And so that's why the devil has tried his best to come in to break up the church. He tried to come in to break up relationships. He tried to come in to break up families. He tried to break up, come in to break up friendships. He tried to break up 
Because he knows that when you come together with somebody with the right purpose, things happen. And when the church comes together with the mindset of serving God and doing God's ministry, there's power that goes on. You can change the world when we come together. But there's one spirit, one body, one baptism. We're in this thing together, which means that the church down the street and I, we're in this together. The church around the corner in the city, we're in this together. We're all on the same team, working for the same God, doing the same ministry. And that's power when we come together. So the devil had made it his business to come in to tear us apart. He made it his business to come in to make. And it's sad that we even have cliques in churches. We have one building with several cliques. We do these things because, watch this, hear me, hear me good, because the devil comes in and he divides. But we got to maintain, watch this, if we maintain the spirit of God and understand that everything we do is because of him, we maintain our power. And when we maintain our power, it says there is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope. And hope of your calling, we, can, we maintain hope. We maintain victory. Because victory, when you're on God's side, you have a guaranteed victory. And the only way you lose it is that you lose your spot by allowing the devil to come in and separate you from where God wants you to be. So it's today, my brothers and sisters, we become the church of God's called to be. We got to understand that we have a calling upon our lives, not just the preacher, but everybody that's a part of this family got a calling upon your life. And you got to walk the walk that God has given you. And you got to walk it without arrogance because God is going to bless you. And you got to learn how to endure others who are in here, those who are in your circle, because suffering will come. But always remember that the thing that unites us is that we work for the Almighty God who is better than us than we've ever been to ourselves. So that's how we become the church that God has called us to be. We'll be in Ephesians for a while in this particular study, in this particular chapter for a while. And I pray to God that we off to a, a good start that we're here because our goal is to become the church that God has called us to be and be the church that God because in the times now, in today's time, we need the church more than any other time, in my opinion. This is our prayer. This is our our message for today. And if you don't know the Lord in the parts of your sin, we are for Christ to you right now. You become a part of this church right where you are by sin telling God, I, I know that you love me. I know that you sent your only begotten son down and died on a hill called Calvary. He died early one Sunday morning, got up with all power in his hands. And he got to he risen from the dead. He ascended back to the right hand of you. Now he sits as an intersection for me. And I pray right now that you allow him to come into my life, to lead and to guide me, and to be my leader. And I submit my will over to him and my way over to him so that I can be all that he would have me to be. And if you said the portion of the prayer that in my brother, so you are saved right at this moment. And we pray right now that you find your local church, that you may come and be a part of, so God can manifest that gift that's in you to help build up the kingdom of God. So this is our prayer, this is our message of the day. May the Lord bless you and keep you as our prayer. Amen.